Hello, and welcome to another episode of Around the Verse. I'm Sandy Gardner. And I'm Steve Bender. This week, Jared brings us an all-new ship shape with a big announcement from Drake Interplanetary. And we'll learn about a couple more weapons debuting in Alpha 3.2. The 3.2.0 patch is now live on the PTU and currently in the capable hands of the Evocati test group. We encourage you to get into the verse and enjoy Alpha 3.1.4 to prepare for the upcoming release. Now, before we get down to guns and ships, let's see what's been going on in development in our weekly PU project update. Ricky, take it away. Welcome back to another Persistent Universe project update. Let's take it to the roadmap. Starting with characters, we can see how some of our mission givers have evolved from concept renderings and early models. We've seen a lot of Bataglia over the past few weeks. Although her animations are still being polished, it's great to see her coming to life. Brunt's current version has a different look to the concept, but his uncompromising attitude certainly stays the same. The last character for today is our pal Klim, whose dialogue and animations are being fine-tuned and tested. Before we move on to mining, let's take a look at a few colours being considered for the updated RSI flight suits. The idea is to find something that really fits a particular piece and its law, rather than just adding variation for the sake of it. Testing is ramping up on the scanning and radar feature you'll use when mining, and the feature teams are still working out the look of the grid and the size of the blobs. We've come a long way since last week's look, but there are things to work out to make sure it works in a fun and intuitive way. Testing also continues on how rock and other mineable assets spawn, You'll be digging up planets in no time at this rate. The audio team is still fine-tuning sound cues and effects to really bring the mining mechanic to life. Check out this new and improved take on the laser audio. And this recent test on the sound effects associated with the tractor beam. As you can tell, balancing the sound of the beam itself with the friction of the rocks is key to enhancing the experience. Work on item kiosks resumes, with branding and UI integration getting really close to completion. It's great news, as these are the first steps towards making it possible to buy ships and their components in-game. Development on quantum linking is making significant progress, so it won't be long until you can quickly cross the gaps between worlds to engage in jolly cooperation. Work has progressed on a new mission type, where we effectively set out to blow stuff up. The target in this concept is the first prop we built using the new ship pipeline. Moving on to ships, we start with the Aegis Hammerhead. Its materials and lighting have been tweaked, while a sharp new colour palette hammers home its more progressive personality. Interior work is coming along nicely, as we can see from these shots of the corridors. The Anvil Hurricane isn't far away now that it's reached its final art phase. The same goes with the rework on the Consolidated Outlands Mustang. Here we can see a few improvements on what we saw in the last PU update. General thruster animation and behaviour are getting a spot of attention too, and are looking super sharp, as you can see in this flight test. Finally, we get a further look at what the environment art team are doing with the tundra biome over on Hurston, and can see some of the progress being made to botanical shading and lighting. Here's the latest from the city of Lawville. You can see how the worn industrial feel of this long-suffering city hints at its history and the bubbling unrest within. Keep an eye out to see how this city plays into the lore of Hurston Dynamics and the rest of the universe. And with that, another weekly update comes to a close. We'll be back next week with further updates. Until then, back to you guys in the studio. Informative as always. Thank you, Ricky. Last week, we went in-depth on the Gemini F-55 and the Demico from Klaus and Werner. Two of four new weapons coming to the PU with Alpha 3.2. That's right. Now let's take a look at the other two guns coming soon to Star Citizen in this week's feature. The scalpel. This is um, the crazy, outrageous um, Kastak sniper rifle. 
I always like Castax stuff because it's always been portrayed as the pirate's choice. Quite uh, specific to the manufacturer is also like uh, a lot of um, external exposed uh, mechanical mechanisms and pistons and stuff like that. I always imagine that even if the gun stopped working, you would just do as much damage by with clubbing someone with one of these things. You can imagine it sort of being made by like a team of guys in a back room kind of thing. You know, they're at, they're at the opposite end of the spectrum in visuals for me compared to like the Gemini, but they're always really fun. So something that makes the scalpel unique is that it features uh, two very large barrels. This is somewhat similar to to a repeater ship weapon, so we could draw a little bit of experience from there in uh, creating these. The Castac Arms scalpel will be the second sniper rifle uh, we'll be putting out um, in the game. The first one being the Klaus von Werner Arrowhead, which is quite a solid, reliable laser sniper rifle. We kind of, again, wanted to play around with the idea of what we could do and how we could make it quite mechanical, because if you've looked at the Devastator, there's a lot of moving parts. Every time you pump the shotgun, there's all these flaps that are opening and closing and things like that. We looked at making it a bolt-action sniper rifle, uh, kind of a bit more of an archaic design that you might not think would appear like in the, in the far-flung future. Um, but it really fit the kind of idea of, you know, the notes we wanted to hit with this company and the sniper rifle they were making. Um, another thing in games and in reality, you see a lot of double barrel shotguns and things like that. And uh, even some of our ship weapons, we've got multi-barrel repeaters and things. Uh, and we wanted to play with the idea of how a double barrel sniper would look. We played around with the idea of it having single shots. So we, you can fire off one shot at a time, one in each barrel, then you can cycle. You, you get two shots out of that. Uh, and then we also wanted to look at the uh, burst fire mode. So a bit more of an aggressive kind of like all in one, like kind of like all eggs in one basket kind of shot. Like I'm firing two sniper bullets at once. It's got enormous amounts of stopping power, but you know, if you miss, you're burning through your ammo much quicker. A bit less accurate in the, in the burst fire mode just because there's a slight offset between, it's, it's, rather than both bullets coming out at once, you've got a slight offset from the recoil. You've also got this um, recoil um, dampener that's on the exterior, so you've got these two pistons. I mean, they're kind of ridiculous. I mean, I, I know that, but it just looks super cool. It's like having your liver on the side and you know your heart out here. They're just, you know, it's just all hanging out. And it sort of also, it also basically adds to that sort of edginess of the weapon because it, it just looks it just looks like it's going to give you a hard time. With the um, reload for this, you know, it's very much a physical mechanical thing, you know, you're having to sort of, you know, opening up this almost doorway with a latch almost and a uh, magazine drops out. And so again, that's just, you know, it's again, it's just a good time for animators to just put a bit more personality in there, you know, because there's a million different ways you can reload this. Quite a big problem we had with this weapon animating on the reloads was uh, actually the magazine arm. Uh, we've limited it to about 45 degrees when it opens, uh, but that does kind of eat into that shooter box that we have in the middle that we try to keep clear. So we had to play around with how much we keep the weapon pointing forward, but also rotate it up so that you see everything interesting on the inside of the weapon, uh, and then have enough room to get your hand in to get that magazine. Uh, it's something that we come across on quite a lot of the weapons that have side folding things. If the magazine's underneath, uh, it's a bit easier because the hand just comes under, grabs, pulls away. Uh, anything which is on the side or close to the back, uh, you've really got to get your hand up in. Uh, and then sometimes, like the scalpel, you pull towards the face. Uh, it is an issue with clipping. So that's one of the main problems I had with this one. Uh, once it's out, it's fine. Just put it in, smack it back in, close the side, weapon's ready to go again. Of course, the difficulty is, you know, as a player, you meant to put this on your back. Well, it was almost the height of the player. Uh, it's just not going to work with any of the animations. It was just going to clip through absolutely everything. So there was a scaling down that had to go on and um, and just, you know, making sure that the stock is adjustable. You know, it, it gives a it gives a, um, a unique signature the, to this weapon, strengthens the whole Castac sort of um, crazy vibe, um, pirate vibe. 
I did sort of quite a few um, sketches. I mean, it's the usual process. You know, we do that. We we do we start off with silhouettes, and then we move to sort of a rough sort of blocking out in two D, just sketching. You know, we'll try this mechanism, try that mechanism, um, and then we go to first pass concept, second pass, and then final. And that's where you know it's fully materialised. All the all the correct colours, all the correct materials, all the you know the sort of right amount of edge wear, um, and just making sure that you know the right amount of red is showing, especially in this scalpel. We've just been like you know it's. This is this is the weapon. This is the way it is. It's you know it makes no apology. Um, you know it's just going to smack you over the head or whatever. You know shoot you from a, from half a mile away or put two bullets in you. You know and it's not going to apologise for it. I was reviewing the animator's previous animations that they'd done for the weapon, and um, it just ha I don't know. I just like it. I, I like the feel of it. I like what the animators have done. They've given it a good, a good, a good feel. It's got a good weight to it. To give the scalpel more oomph, uh, it's actually got some kind of hydraulic system on top, so uh, we have control of that. So when each barrel fires, we also have the extra uh, kickback, extra recoil on the weapon, uh, which I think looks cool. Gives it a bit more weight, a bit more feeling. The recoil on the body, uh, because it's a single fire animation. Uh, we're actually uh, playing an animated recoil as the base. Uh, so you get that kickback, the shoulder goes, the upper body goes, you get a bit of the hips, um, which you can't really get fully if it was just procedural. Uh, so then on top of that, we add the extra bits, kind of the sway to the left, the bit of inaccuracy. Uh, but as a base, we have that animated, really good looking recoil for the scalpel. One of the disadvantages with the scalpel compared to the arrowhead is that it's, it's a ballistic weapon, so you find yourself a little bit more limited on ammo, like the arrowhead, like eventually you might be able to recharge your, your mag packs and things like that. Uh, so it'll last you a little bit longer in the field. You've also got the option of charging your shots, or you can kind of pop out slightly weaker shots. Whereas this would be, like I say, it's a little bit, it's definitely a long range and very powerful weapon, but it's a little bit less reliable in that it's a, you've got heavier recoil, you've got kind of longer time between shots to cycle your rounds and if you go for the double shot fire mode you'll find yourself burning through ammo quite quickly and if you're not on target then yeah you're going to find yourself a bit more vulnerable. Who's going to want this weapon? I can see it being the person that's really annoying, the griefer, the person that's on a sand dune but like a kilometre away and you're on your, um, you're on your like dragonfly or your nox and you're just speeding along and you're just having a great time. It's like something out of Star Wars, isn't it? You know, with and then you, and then suddenly he just tracks you and and just shoots you off your bike. I, yeah, I can see it. I can see that one going down well. And then you know, back on you know, put it back on your back, and then you just walk off into the desert. The ship weapon we're bringing for 3.2 is the Associated Science and Development. DR model XJ uh, distortion repeaters uh, that will be coming in sizes one to three. So Associated Science and Development is a new company, so it will be making its debut in 3.2. And they are a very kind of like high scientific, high tech company, very clean in look and how they operate. So we really wanted to make sure that we hit the right notes for that in the design. So this is basically the first of the weapons, the ship weapons that we've um, created for associated science and development. It's always interesting with these weapons because uh, they have to fit on ships, obviously, um, and they may not always totally dovetail visually with the style of the ship, you know, because a player can put on pretty much any weapon as long as it's got the right um, size mount. This company is basically in, um, their history is in medical science, um, so it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a no-brainer, but you, you kind of know where to look. You know, you, you basically, we, you know, when we pull reference, it's basically you're looking at science equipment. You're looking at, um, you know, basically classic. It's almost classic product design. You know, you're looking at those big sort of radial scanners. Well, you know, it's everything's always clean. It's quite precise, and so you know, you basically have to figure out how you sort of transfer that into a ship weapon. 
So as a distortion weapon, it differs quite a lot from the scatter guns in that the scatter guns will be unloading a lot of damage at once. So if it hits with all of its pellets, you're going to be doing a huge chunk of distortion damage at once, but you'll find that you can only get that done at shorter ranges, whereas these repeaters are meant for more sustained distortion damage, keeping those shields ticking down, stopping them from regenerating, and then slowly building up the distortion damage on the internal um, items of a ship until they kind of reach a point where the ship does shut down. So making these new ship weapons was pretty easy and straightforward for the art department. Even though we had to deal with a new manufacturer, the actual style of it was very clean and minimalistic, uh, almost clinical with uh, a lot of parts hidden, hidden away between large white panels. So this one is a, um, a distortion repeater. And so, you know, we've gone for the classic two, essentially two barrels. And then the styling is a little bit different. I mean, it's still quite clean, but the actual shape of the weapon is something that we've done less of. Um, and you know, all these weapons have to fit into the um, the upgrade path. You know, so all the weapons have to be able to upgrade the barrel, upgrade the cooling, upgrade the firing mechanism, and the power pack. Uh, and some weapons will be totally obvious, like you'll you know might even go from a red power pack to a green power pack to a blue power pack. This one is, we've kept it very much within the sort of science medical character. So everything is quite subtle, you, like nothing, nothing really is going to be shouting out. You've upgraded your weapon, you're really going to have to know, you, you know, you'll be a sort of, you'll be a specialist, you'll be like, yeah, I've, you know, this is the third upgrade or this is the second upgrade of that part. And you'll just know by there'll be a slight panel line tweak or a slight extra bulge or, you know, it's all that subtlety. This one is, you know, totally not like a Castac manufacturer or anything like that. This is very subtle and clean, basically. But uh, I think, you know, in terms of the spectrum, the whole spectrum of the weapons that we've got, you know, it does, you know, it does fill a niche. You know, that's, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to create that that full range so not only will you choose the weapon for what it does but you'll choose it for the look of you you know for the look of it and does it go with your ship does it look cool do you care maybe you don't even care maybe you like the fact that it looks totally different to whatever the ship is that you're flying and what are the key features you know it's the clean the clean surfaces um, it's the lack of visual noise, it's the, it's the precision, everything's extremely precise, you know, it's only, it's only there because it's needed to be there. If it's, if it's not needed, you don't see it, it's hidden, you know, it's, it's very, um, it, you know, it, it's very medical in that sense. And we've, you know, we've tried to sort of keep within that, keep within that vibe. I mean, because of the cleanliness of the design, the sort of, inherent simplicity. Um, you can imagine this going on in sort of multiple multiple types of ships, you know, it could be, you know, you can easily see it going on at Origin, you know, sort of fitting in with their style. Maybe the Constellation, you know, sort of, um, I guess, you know, if your ship's white, you, you know, you, you're doing well. If it's clean, you know, clean style, then, it, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna sit and sort of blend in more with that ship. I think, the difficulty will be if you're, you've got these white guns and you've got it on a black uh, hard ass ship, you know, then it's going to be, you're going to have this disparity. But uh, I can imagine some people kind of liking that just because of the, just the sort of the contrast and just just looking outrageous. And, and But that's the beauty of Star Citizen, just you can do whatever you want. It's cool to see not only new FPS weapons showing up in 3.2, but ship weapons as well. That's right, and while we're on the topic of ships, Drake Interplanetary is set to make a major announcement. Maybe Jared can shed a little light on the subject in a new installment of Ship Shape. Greetings citizens, and welcome to another all new edition of Ship Shape, where we take a quick look at what's on the ship pipeline, who's working on what, provide interviews with developers, and sometimes I end up looking like I'm wearing daddy's jacket. I mean, it's time to get another suit jacket, I guess. JJ, put it on the list. I'm your host, content manager, Jared Huckabee. Now, over the last two weeks, 
we've been teasing a brand new addition to the Star Citizen universe in our other programs like Calling All Devs and Reverse the Verse on each and every Monday, respectively. Watch them. But the original introduction of this new concept goes all the way back to our December 2016 show when we presented Happy Hour Game Dev, You Pick the Next Drake Ship. Now, during that broadcast, we had designers and artists ponder multiple explorations of several different ship concepts. For instance, last month's uh, Hercules Starlifter takes its name and overall purpose from the Soviet cargo helicopter concept that we discussed during that show. Now, while the specific ship we explored that episode didn't win the vote, we did like the name enough to apply it to a similarly purposed offering from Crusader Industries. So, what ship did win the vote? Which concept did you pick to be the next Drake ship? Well, it was close. After about a week's worth of voting back in December, it looked like the Kraken was going to be the next offering from Drake. But roaring ahead with an entry-level profession-based mindset was the Drake Vulture. Now, over the last six months, we've developed this original kernel of an idea into a fully fleshed out concept that we think the Star Citizen community will be proud to add to its hangars. Let's find out more about this newest addition straight from the team working to bring this ship you voted for to life in this week's Ship Shape Featurette. The Vulture is a single person ship, so it's designed for the solo player. Players that want to get into the salvage career, that's what it's, it's built around, that is its sole purpose. The inspiration for the ship was from the Dragonfly. You have two arms on Drake Dragonfly, you see them as well on the Vulture. However, this time they have a different purpose, which is dragging in salvage, processing it. Got a little bit of cargo space to store all the processed salvage or other cargo if you wish. It's designed to sort of sneak in, do a bit of salvage work, process that and move on to the next place rather than uh, something like the Reclaimer which is just a huge target. But obviously the size of it is you can't take this little ship up to an Idris and expect to just chomp it like something like the uh, Reclaimer could do. Uh, so to give you a, a quick overview of how the, the salvage process will work, hopefully. You'll be flying along in your Vulture, you've got great visibility, there's very minimal cockpit struts or screens getting in your way uh, when you're flying around. You'll scan for things you want to salvage, just like you, you'll be scanning for mining. You come alongside, you've got to then decide whether you want to do like a complete salvage, that is taking all the weapons and ordnance off. So if that's the case, EVA out carry those items back off the ship, put them in your cargo hold for safekeeping and selling later, get back in your ship. Then it's a process of scraping the hull with the scraper beams to sort of strip the surface off. That all gets processed into a commodity. Then it's a salvage charges to break apart the hull more. So essentially the ship cuts up the panels of the wrecks. It drags them in uh, while processing and then it goes into the second processing stage inside of the ship where it all gets packed into cubes, just like combine harvesters. At the end, you get a cube of salvage rather than a, a cube of hay. Depending on the size of what you want to salvage, it can be a quite a time-consuming process. If you're there in the Vulture trying to take apart a, a staff error, it's going to take a long time, but you'll probably do it eventually. But it would be better if you had a reclaimer or some friends in Vultures to help you do that. Uh, smaller ships like Gladys is probably not worth uh, a reclaimer's time to go and munch that up. But a vulture is something that will get a lot of return out of that. We're hoping that it'll be a really good experience for the player. You know, it'll be the wide range, won't it? You know, Star Citizen, you could, and you're just surrounded by black space, and you've, you know, you come across a wreck. I, I can't imagine it being sort of a clean thing. There's just going to be chaos going on in front of you and you're there um, just stripping metal, pulling bits off. It was designed from inside out, meaning I started with the player and, okay, as a player, what do I want to see? And first thing was maximum visibility. So the cockpit hasn't got any struts or it has only two for the doors. So you can see the entire processing while you're doing uninterrupted. And I think it's amazing. The ship has a extensive set of animations. It has a front jaw door where the processing happens for the salvage and as well 
in the cargo room, uh, there will be an animation for the grinders, pretty much like on the Aegis Reclaimer. It has two stages, one landed, when everything is sort of flatted out, and as soon as you go into the space, or you take off and go into the salvage processing mode, the front arms, they go down, the weapons on the sides fold out from the cabin, so you can actually see them from inside of your cabin, which I think it's cool. A lot of ships don't have that. All the animations that will happen on a ship, you will see them, including the cabin. It's got a unique set of a moving chair and everything sort of attached to the cabin and it unfolds as you boot up the ship. Not only a screen turning on, but it's actually appearing in front of you, which gives a lot of visibility and cool factor. Another cool part about the ship is how you climb onto it. So you don't just go through the door or a cargo bay, which you can, but you have to climb the arm, climb the ship, get into the cabin. It's a very Earth-like process applied to the very sci-fi design, which I think is awesome. So once again, Jones, what was briefly yours is now mine. It's Raiders of the Lost Ark. No, salvaging, kind of, no? Okay. The Drake Vulture promotion will begin for all backers tomorrow, June 15th, and will be your entry point to an exciting career in the universe of salvaging. Now, like the Prospector for mining or the Vulcan for repairing and refueling, these profession-based ships represent the first steps into a larger world beyond just fighting. See, that's an Obi-Wan thing. I've been watching a lot of movies lately. It's not perfect. All right. As for the other ships in our pipeline, ship teams are pretty much heads down putting the finishing touches on our seven new additions to Star Citizen in Alpha 3.2. So we'll have more updates about the ships that are coming after those in the coming weeks. For ShipShape, I'm content manager Jared Huckabee. Back to you, Sandy and Steve. Thanks, Jared. The Vulture looks like a nice rugged addition to the Drake fleet. It certainly does, and it will be available for everyone to pledge for tomorrow. To get even more juicy details about this lean, mean salvage machine, make sure you turn into Reverse the Verse live tomorrow at 9 a.m. PDT on Twitch. Thanks to all our subscribers for sponsoring all of our shows. Yes, and thanks also to all of our backers for continuing to support our game's development. And a special thank you to Viking from Norway for sending Chris and I a couple of Robert's radios. Oh, that, Look at that. that is yeah, that don't is you really want one? cool. Yes, thank you. That is beautiful. Right, you're Excellent. Line. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Until next time, we will see we'll you. See you Around, around the verse. The verse. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.